Right, in today's video, we've got one of these. Now you may well have seen these under a number of different names. The Serpent 4000, the NI440, all the same radio really. All they do is just change the channel selection knob. Now you'll notice that this channel selection knob isn't the right knob. It should look like this knob. This one here, which is off of my very, very tidy Serpent 4000, which I've got the manual for and everything, which is which I'll get to stand next to this one side by side, so you can see. And there's my radio, as you can see, it's a little bit uh, a little bit tidier than this one. And there's the front of it. And I've got the I've took the channel knob off and the selection knob there because when I bid on this one. I saw that it got the incorrect knob on, although I do like this knob, it's actually really quite a nice uh, chunky knob, but it's not the right knob for the radio. So, so I've modelled in 3D um, a complete replacement, one of these, because they're going to be very hard to get hold of. So I've modelled that in 3D, and I've also modelled these knobs in 3D, and I'm going to resin print them. I've got some black resin, I'm going to resin print them to replace them replace that knob on this radio. As you can see these knobs are okay, they just need to clean. But uh, that's going to be interesting um, because I, I've seen quite a few of these for sale where they've had this knob missing so uh, I'll probably pop those on my eBay page uh, if anyone else needs to get a knob because I think once it's resin printed that's going to look really nice because there's some fine splines on there you see and the resin printer will replicate those completely so um, I think that's going to look good but um, let's just power this radio on to see if it works. Now this seller I bought this radio from, um, I bought two other radios from him before and he always lists the radios on eBay as packed away donkeys years ago. Uh, and what you should list them as is this is these radios are going to be an absolute nightmare for you to fix. That's what that's what you should put in the listing. <laughs> uh, fix them I have but oh my god. Yeah there was and the telltale sign I think he's had these from a, a like um a, an estate sale or something. The telltale sign on all the radios is this bit of red tape. They've either got a red tape or a red dot on the back of them and that essentially means I think that was his code for I can't get it to work. So um, yeah I've not had one yet off the guy I haven't been out of repair but they've, they've been a pain to repair so um, yeah I suspect this one will be no different. There's something to watch for straight away. You can see the socket on this radio here it's actually either been removed or replaced and put in the wrong way around all right if you ever do buy a radio one that says uh, packed away years ago work when it uh, was last turned on always be very suspicious when you take the lid off and the speaker is not connected um, because and also particularly if, if you've received a radio with all the case screws on because it obviously if, if the radio was working you would it would never have been put back together without the speaker being connected so there's your first clue something's wrong I mean straight away we can see here that the top of the relay here is missing um, they very rarely go wrong I imagine that this has been reversed and the reason for that I think is um, there's, there's some stress on top of the main incoming capacitors there that one looks a little bit bulgy the main diode there has been cut, but weirdly, the power socket on this is the wrong way around. See, we have a positive and a negative here. Now, if you if you connect your standard lead for this radio, that's my glasses falling off my head. If you connect the standard lead for this radio, which is always wired in this fashion, with the positive tip to the top of that ridge, if you were to connect this up on this radio. Because somebody has connected it round the wrong way and oriented it round the wrong way, you would have positive at the top, which is negative inside the radio. And instantly, just, just that one mistake of the person that's either changed this socket or rewired it for whatever reason would instantly uh, make those without a keen eye blow the radio. I mean, particularly, obviously, if they haven't got a fuse, and probably likely they haven't, you know, very often these leads over the t over the years, they get a rusty old nail or a hair grip in there, or if there's any fuse at all. And that will cause significant damage then straight away. And we'll just uh, pop the replacement diode in the board down there. I can say it's uh, a, a top uh, thing with this is uh, try not to get distracted, because it's very, very easy to pop these in the wrong way around. Okay, so that's the diode fitted and replaced. 
we've reversed the socket so it's now the correct orientation um, so we can uh, solder on into powering this up and um, the one nice thing about this socketed uh, chip here is that I can obviously take the chip out of the working radio and pop it in this one if I have an issue which will save me some time and um, I shall get on and get that relay sorted I mean if that relay works uh, then I'll just simply 3D print a, uh, a cover for the top of it and uh, stick that on and put a little label on it so the next person that comes to fix it in 40 years time will know what uh, what the relay is. Okay as usual we're using the Hanama Tech current limiting supply and uh, we just tap this little uh, dial here and then we can set what current limit we currently got it set to half an amp so uh, that uh, should be fine for just receive for now and uh, so here's the moment of truth okay well we have a channel light on we don't have any uh, meter but we do have a channel light so we know the regulator is working that's something let's pop it on channel 20 and let's see if we can get any audio out of it in the PA mode so there's our CB PA switch so let's see if we're getting any audio first so no we're not getting anything there so no no audio on PA so we'll pop it into uh, an extension speaker socket and I imagine if my suspicions are correct that we've got a a um, a reversed condition here because we're not getting any sound at all out of the radio whatsoever let's see if we're getting a deflection when we try and key up let's see if we're getting any kind of deflection no so it's not relay is is, uh, is indicating it's going into transmit um, so I'll need to pull the circuit diagram to see whether that indicate is indicative that the synthesizer is working but we'll have a listen to see if we can uh, well we'll get the President Randy because uh, he's very handy so we'll get Randy on the case and see what we can hear or what we can uh, transmit okay so we've got President Randy on the case here and we're going to just try and pop a signal into this one two one two so nothing on the meter there nothing no audio heard from the radio and we'll try and go the other way and see if we can hear anything from this radio. Ah, one, two, there we go. We've got the TX light. Well, that's good. That's, that's excellent because um, that proves to me that the, uh, that the synthesizer is working, which is good because they're about 15 quid a go if you need to change them. Uh, it, it proves to me, I think, that the transmit relay is working. Uh, although I will test that and goodness me it's absolutely lashing it down outside. Let me show you this. Coolummy. Coolummy governor. That's not very nice out there is it? It's better to be here inside uh, fixing CB radios. So well actually that isn't so bad is it? Uh, I I might have the audio IC. I do, I do have a uh, stock of different ones. Notice now we do have some meter activity. It's a little bit sporadic but we do have it and um, like I say the bulb would need changing in there but that's not a problem and we, we just ch ch testing the Roger Beep you know me I love a Roger Beep so hey that's good news the Roger Beep is working we've got RF gain at maximum squelch switched off um, but we've just got no volume so uh, I'm just reminding myself I need to cut the legs off that diode the radio powered up a simple basic check on your audio is to establish where the audio IC is and then just literally touch the pins on the back of it and as you can see here we're not getting any output to the speaker no matter where we touch we're not getting any output at all now we can present a signal to the radio here which I think would be a good test just to make sure RF wise if we're getting a signal um, so we'll do that next we'll fire up the signal generator okay another good sign we're on channel 20 um, we're going to switch the signal generator on now with a 100 microvolt signal which is an S9 signal on CB in the UK and there we go so that's good that means RF rise RF wise we've got um, TX albeit with no power and we've got RX um, so the main issue now is no audio so let's um let's desolder well let's first quickly try going over the joints in case it is a dry joint issue but I don't think it will be Okay, so I've redone those joints and we've got uh, probing on here. We've got 13.6 uh, volts on the meter. So 
we've got our uh, got our volts there, um, but um, we've got nothing coming from that now. Just powering that up with 13 volts, with nothing else connected. So if you just powered that up on the bench with 13.8 volts and attached a, a speaker to the output of that, you would get drive. So um, yeah, that's definitely gone. So we'll we'll take that out now. And there you can see a, a hole sort of blown straight through the well the front of the of the IC there. And um, I don't think I've got any of those in my stock, but I do have some scrap chassis. So we'll. Have a little go look through those to see and i just noticed there's a little sleeve on the pin one i've not seen that before a little plastic sleeve there on the pin so we'll have a look at that um i think first stop is we'll clean it up see what it is and we'll check ebay and see what the damage is going to be if i need to buy a new one and of course the nice thing of having a reference radio is we can read the letters off of that and it's a ta7205 ap because uh, unless you check the circuit diagrams or another radio Somebody may well have put the wrong IC in there as well, so it's always worth checking from a reliable source of some kind. In one of my boxes of many Magic CB pair spares, I've got about 10 of these. I do have stock of 7205 APs. Look how many we got in there. One, two, three, four. Four, four of them. So, yay, we're in business. And uh, because this uh, part has been sat in a box for 40 years, just waiting for its moment to shine. The one thing that doesn't shine is the legs of these. Now, if you see chips or RF power transistors or other components that are claimed to be new and they've got all shiny pins, well, they're very often not, and they, they're very definitely fake because they haven't made these audio ICs for quite a while now. So um, any stock that you do get, unless they've been kept in perfect conditions, will come with tarnished leads. So what I'll do is I'll give these a clean with this brush very, very carefully and get these all nice and shiny and clean so we don't get any dry joints introduced further down the line when I replace this. Like most of these older radios, they use a Japanese type screw and in these plastic screw threads on these, they, they often get mangled because people haven't got the right screwdriver. So we'll pop a, a normal Phillips type uh, screw or a, I think these might be, yeah, they're Phillips. And we'll pop one of those in and we'll, we'll flip reverse it so there's a nut on this side to make it easier to change for the next person should this ever need a new audio IC. We'll pop a little bit of thermal paste along the back of this as well, just to uh, give it a nice thermal contact with the with the old transfer. The, um, the There's a, like a clear plastic washer on the back of it as well, which you, if you do this, you need to make sure it's there because uh, that pre prevents the tab from this shorting to the, to the ground of the case. And that's nicely on there. You can just see a little bit of the thermal goo is just, uh, it's just squeezed out the side of the um, of the plate there and what we'll do is we'll just put a tiny little bit of uh, Loctite on the end of the nut there uh, just in case this radio is ever used in a mobile situation probably probably very unlikely that that will be the case with these vintage stuff but you never know Loctite which I didn't mention is you must always secure the audio IC first and align it and then solder it don't do it the other way around because you'll put a lot of strain and pressure on these pins so don't solder it, uh, solder it first, solder it last once you've got it located and fixed down. Okay, that's in. So this is the moment of truth. Have we fixed it? Yay! We've got some good volume now as well. Let's check our squelch. Squelch, squelch is working. Okay, so I suppose we can pop, it, pop that tone in and see what it sounds like. Okay, there's our tone. Okay, so that sounds like it definitely needs a bit of work, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. Well, what I'll do is, because um, while I've got the soldier and iron warmed up, we'll, we'll put the new bulb in that meter. That'll be the next job we'll do. And I've got some very, very cheap alternatives to the usual five quid a go jobs. I've got some 10 pence jobs from uh, China, which will fit with a little resistor, which look lovely and um, save me money, which is good called a grain of wheat bulb what I use are these they're instrument panel bulbs from China they're very very cheap and uh, and they produce a nice warm glow and sometimes if they're a little bit hot or they run a little bit warm uh, I'll put a 75 ohm resistor in series with them a 1 watt resistor there so the whole combination there works out about 15 pence or something like that whereas um, 
some people or some companies will charge you quite a lot more than that. I've seen LED, I've seen uh, bump lamp bulbs go for nine pounds for uh, a meter. <laughs> so if you're doing this uh, like I do it, um, where you're doing you know 10 to 15 radios a week sometimes, um, then you definitely uh, don't want to be spending that on a bulb. On this radio, it's very hard to take the front cover off. Um, because there's captive nuts holding all the controls on so if you can do the four screws at the side you can pivot the front fascia down and then uh, get in and get to, uh, get your meter assembly out that way and I'll have to uh, it's quite dirty the front of this I'll have to clean it from the other side using a paintbrush and some uh, spray foam it normally brings them up nice and clean but I'm doing those three screws you can then push the meter out from the front and then you've got access to the, the bulb inside there and um, as you can see that's phys physically quite a decent sized bulb and you must never put an overrated bulb in these meters because you'll melt the meter uh, the, the common one used to be Christmas tree light bulbs people used to put in there and you can of course put LEDs in there um, if you want to that certainly it's worth doing that if you've had problems in a CB where you've already got a melted meter and, and it is running hot um, but uh, I think you always get a much nicer more authentic look by using a real bulb. It's more of a pain because at some point it will need changing but um, uh, there are quite a few people in the vintage radio scene that don't like to see uh, LEDs in there. So, uh, But if you know that's your only option, that's your only option and if it's your radio then of course you can do whatever you like. So I put a couple of pieces of silicon tube in to keep the, the conductors separate and then we'll sleeve over the top of that and then put it into the light, existing light clip. So it's nice and secure um, it can, we don't want it to touch, so we don't want it to melt anything. Although with the resistor, it shouldn't run that warm. So, uh, but you don't want it. You don't want it to touch the plastic if possible. And there we go. That's nicely in there. No danger of it shorting out. I'm gonna get my big fat fingers in there. You can see how how small that thing is. Always worth powering the radio up and checking first. Um, I'll pop it in the meter as well before we actually flip this back together, just to make sure I'm happy with the brightness. Because I do have some bigger bulbs, and it is quite a big meter this one but you don't want it to be overpowering I think you probably agree that looks uh, about right and uh, I don't think there's any need for a dropper a uh, dropper resistor there we'll just check and see how hot the bulbs getting new but uh, I think we're about right we'll break out the resin printers uh, to do the knobs in a bit um, but just in the meantime we'll uh, we'll get all the detritus I don't know if you can see in there there's quite a lot of crud and horribleness in there so we'll spray some foam in there and using a paintbrush will get all that out. And there we go. Yuck. Right, look at the difference that has made there. Bit of a scrub. It's uh it's a bit tricky because obviously that foam is water based so you have to be a bit careful not to get it in the controls but if you invert it, you turn it upside down when you're cleaning it, you clean it upside down, all the dirt drains off and it's less likely to go in the controls. To be honest, it's fine. If you get a bit of dirt in the controls, switch cleaner and WD-40 is your friend. Alright, so just put the four side screws in, remembering not to over tighten them folks. You don't need to be over tight, just pinched up. Alright, look at the difference there. Lovely, eh? That's almost as nice looking as my, my nice looking one. <laughs> So uh, what we do now is, um, just so we can finish that off, we'll go and clean these uh, rather dirty knobs. Nobody wants a dirty knob, let alone uh, four of them. From four very dirty knobs to four very clean ones. Let's pop them back on the radio. See the difference that makes? Really brightens it up. You can actually see the little white markers on the on the knobs there. Now what I think I'll do is I'll actually... Um, just for now, till I print the other one, we'll actually give that one a bit of a clean. It's actually not a bad knob. I don't know if it's off CB, but um, it's actually nice and uh, nice and grippy. So we'll give that a little clean, and we'll just put it on there just for now. That's cleaned up pretty nice, I think. It's a uh, someone will probably uh, leave a comment to tell me it's off of a cooker or something. <laughs> but yeah, I'll pop that back on just for now because uh, it's cleaned up nice and. Uh, I've still got to sort the transmit and receive out on this radio. Wow, quite a difference that, isn't it? With a uh, a working meter light and an all nicely cleaned up. 
makes a huge difference to uh, the radio doesn't it um, so yeah very pleased with that that's come up a uh, peach and yeah um, I really like that uh, control knob so um, I might have to 3d print one of those as well and keep it for myself <laughs> so um, okay what we'll do now then we'll um, we'll try and establish why we're not getting any transmit there we go cleaned up and all sorted out so um, let's uh, unsolder the power transistor now and uh, we'll test that with our uh, transistor tester it is nestled on the back of the board and um, there's a little bit of flux around here but um, we'll perhaps give that a little bit of a clean off first and then uh, we'll relieve it okay that's nice and clean it's always worth doing that particularly around um, if you've got any intricate repairs or any damage around thinner tracks always worth taking the isopropyl alcohol to the whole board we'll just do it in this one area for now and if we need to do any more we'll perhaps do the whole board. Right, there we go, the advantage of doing it this way, testing the transistor this way, is that you don't have to take it out, you don't have to unbolt it or do anything with it. If that tests okay on here, we can simply just push those tabs back down and solder it back in the circuit. So uh, let's uh, see what the tester says. Ooh, so yes, a capacitor. It definitely isn't a capacitor, is it? Always worth just checking your leads are, are in uh, a good place and uh, you got nothing shorting out and then just doing the test one more time but that's uh, definitely looking like the main power transistor has blown so we need to take that out all right we've just freed up the bolt we should be able to just tug this bad boy out of there and um there was a little bit of metal i noticed actually you see that down there a little tap or something so um We'll pop it in the tester again now we've got it out, just to double check before we try and find a replacement. The offending item is an NEC 2SC1306 RF power transistor. And um, I've checked in my other radio. I've checked in my other radio and that is indeed the right power transistor. We'll pop it in the tester again and pop the tester up and see what it says. Yeah, so it's still showing as faulty. Right, so we're going to go ahead and assume, because it does look fairly untampered with, that that, that it was probably just a, a, a bad SWR on the antenna that caused that issue and not nothing this side of the radio. There's not, to be fair, not a lot this side of the radio that could do that, but um, the uh, certainly uh, stories of people using golf clubs as antennas and... Uh, or not uh, God only knows we have a willing participant hopefully and um, we're going ahead and assume that that's working we'll take it out anyway and uh, we'll pop it in I like that on this radio the designers of the radio have actually allowed <laughs> for the thing to be removed whereas on this radio I mean having a hole there in the side of the case would have really helped in the removal of the sound IC and look how they bury the power transistor in there with a the screw rather than a nut. You know, it would have been much nicer if they'd have used a a, a, threat, a nut instead of a screw because you can't, you know, what can you do? So well, I know they used a nut on the back of it, but you get my point. So, so yeah, I like it. I like it when I see things like this because they know that these things are going to go, you see. This is a 2SC1909, so it should, in theory, be the same pinout, BCE. There we go, number one is B, number two is C, number three is E. So that transistor is good. So we can use that one in our set. So now we've made that a cap head Allen key slot. We can put the Allen key in there. And it's simply a case now of holding the nut with a pair of pliers and just tightening that up. So it's much easier. But, um, perhaps they weren't as readily available back in the day. And when you're doing the, these type of connections with the plastic washers, don't over tighten them because you can deform the washer inside and end up uh, with a short. So the best thing to do before you solder it in is to get your meter and test between the tab, between the metal tab of the power transistor and this backing, this aluminium backing. If you've got any continuity, then you need to take that screw out and get another cap or put a plastic screw in there to stop that from shorting out. Because if you don't, it will cause you problems. So I've got the meter on the bench here. And I've just tested in between the, the casing of this and the metal tub of that, and we're not getting we're not getting any continuity, so we know 
are all okay. We can now go on the underside and bend those legs round and uh, solder them to the PCB. Okay, that's nicely soldered in. And we're fast approaching the end of my working time for today. I'm gonna pop downstairs and watch a bit of TV, put my feet up and have a glass of wine. And before I do that though, I won't leave in suspense. We'll stick it on the power meter and just see if we've got at least some power now. So that is no, we're not getting any transmit now. Not even getting any low power transmit, but we are getting receive. There we go. There's our receive. So yeah, there's obviously something else afoot. We shall have a glass of wine. And sometimes it's better to uh, walk away from things anyway and just have a little think. Um, we'll have a glass of wine and we'll get the RF meter out uh, tomorrow morning and we'll go further with this. Okay, so there is a circuit diagram that's been redone by Blunham's for this radio and there's a note in the bottom corner here uh, for the VCO which we will need to, to tune. It says select channel 40, CB mode on receive, monitor pin 17 on the LC7137, adjust L1 for 4 volts, set to transmit and adjust CT1 for, for 4 volts. Yeah, so with the probe we're, we're getting the same reading uh, on R2 at that point on R2 as we are on pin 17 so you can actually just go straight off of pin number 17 on the LC7137 uh, and you'll get the same reading. So we're on uh, pin number 17 we should be getting 4 volts there and uh, as you can see we're uh, getting actually a bit of a swing on the voltage there which can sometimes be indicative of uh, a regulator problem or something so um, we will uh, adjust that and get that up to four volts and then uh, you adjust CT1 which is the yellow trimmer you adjust that one on transmit still can't get a lock and I'm detecting something as I mentioned in the video uh, I was suspecting something on the voltage regulation side and here we have the um, the 8 volt voltage regulator and we've got the input uh, there at 13.6 volts but the output is supposed to be 8 volts and it's only down at, it's down at 2.8 so there's either something in the circuit that's dragging that voltage down uh, or it's a faulty regulator. So what I'm going to do is desolder that pin and isolate it and then we'll probe it then. I mean of course it could still be faulty uh, even if we do that but we'll do that first. Yeah so we've desoldered that connection there and we pop the probe on to the pin and we're still only reading 2.3. Let's get this camera for there. Pop it back on the pin. And we're still only reading 2.3 volts there you see on that regulator so that that regulator should be putting out 8 volts so that needs to come out that i think is where our problem is lying i've seen that before when i've been repairing cv radios when i've been if you're checking dc voltages and you're getting fluctuations particularly on the regulated supply um you'll really notice that on a multi-digit range in meter and um, the last digit is not so critical but if your preceding digits are starting to go up and down then you can i didn't actually check the the voltage on it until i started to see that moving and then uh, it was fairly evident that this thing was faulty now um i mean there is no on most radios these are heat you know they're affixed to a heatsink of some kind and on this design it's just in free space and i i think it just um it just got too hot i mean you can get a little clip on heat sinks for these uh, but um, you know worst case scenario is I just have to put another one in if it goes again which I very much doubt it will I still suspect this has been over vaulted at some point uh, briefly uh, but um, there we go I'll, uh, I can't do anything now so I'm gonna have to wait until tomorrow but what I will do is go we'll go down and uh, get these knobs 3d printed because uh, that needs doing so um, we'll fire up the resin printer right in the resin printing room otherwise known as the utility room and uh, we'll fire these bad boys up. I haven't done any resin printing for a little while, so this will be interesting. I do have some black though, so let's get the black resin down and uh, and get this thing working. It'll take about an hour, and the files are just on that. We've got the black resin there. You don't want to get this anywhere, so we'll uh, anywhere than other than in this tray. So we'll put some goop in there. That should be enough easily. And if this works, I'll probably rattle off a few of these uh, knobs and stuff and put them on eBay anyone who fancies any nice smooth Amstrad knobs we'll have a go and it's literally thumb drive in the front press print 
select your file I'm shredding up let's go and down she comes so hopefully that'll work we'll see you in an hour and a half I've just printed off the labels and sprayed them with some protective lacquer and they come out really really nice you can see we've got uh, four of them on there so we'll let that dry for 24 hours and then we'll and peel that off and stick it onto the knobs. And as it's now the next day, early in the morning, these uh, voltage regulators arrived. I decided to uh, pick up a packet of various values there. I'll come in very handy. And I also picked up a cheap packet of relays as well. It depends on what that relay is like. Um, I've got some relays as well, but it seems to be switching okay. Um, so uh, I could leave it in there and just make a little cover for it or just change it for one of these newer relays okay let's pop this bad boy in there and what we will do is uh, we'll leave the output pin uh, just free so I'll test the voltage just to make sure it's definitely uh, working okay before we solder it up and uh, power up the board exposed there now we've got our 8 volts we can solder that up and hopefully we'll be able to adjust the VCO so we've got a much more stable voltage now look where it was racing around all over the place before because of that regulator. So we've got our four volts on channel 40. Okay, so we've got our transmit transmit back now. One, two, one, two. We just need uh, power, we just haven't got any power. So we've changed the final transistor. So we're gonna work backwards to check that one. But maybe we'll work with the RF meter just to see where we're, uh, we're losing the power or where it's not coming. But I think it's very likely that this driver is also gone so we'll test that first. Now that transistor is okay um, so we'll work backwards from there and um, what I might actually do is have a go because I think this has been fiddled with we'll just have a go at tuning up the front end of the power section anyway because uh, uh, yeah, I've just noticed that some of those look to be out so uh, we'll try that. We're so keying up now as you can see there full scale Finally traced the reason for no RF output power is the main driver transistor had actually gone again. Um, I don't know whether that went, that it was out, whether it was uh, it had a fault and it just went, but um, that was the reason for no drive. So I got another scrap chassis and uh, put a new transistor in there. So that's all fine now. So off camera, I'm going to go and do tune the, the front end on transmit. I'm not going to show that, but it's these, if you have to do this on the radio, it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, th those in, in that order, uh, just tune it for peak on transmit. So uh, we'll just do that and uh, see where we can get it to. Okay, now we're getting a full four watts out of the radio. So I'm happy that's aligned. We'll check it on the uh, spectrum analyzer a little bit later on, but uh, I'm happy that's okay. There's our S meter. The first thing to adjust is the power. It's actually roughly in the right place. That's halfway in the middle of the red zone. If you do need to adjust that, it's this one up at the top here, VR3. You need to adjust the modulation or deviation. It's this one, VR1 down here. We're okay on this one, it didn't need anything doing. I'm going to show you. One, two, one, one. So that's 2.2 to 2.5. That's fine. Pretty amazing receive sensitivity with no adjustment. It's doing. 0.34 microvolts for 12 dB synad, um, which is uh, again another amazing one. Let's just take it all the way down. You can still hear it at 0.1 of a microvolt there. It's starting to get a bit noisy, but yeah, that's pretty quiet. That's pretty, pretty decent. I will uh, just go through the front end on this and see if we can pick it up a little bit and see if we, we can, but uh, it's possibly that we won't be able to do anything. We've got a little bit of an improvement. We've got it down to 0.29 of a microvolt for just over 12 dB synad there. It's going up and down a little bit. And um, we'll just whiz it down and see where we can still hear it. That's cleaning now all the way down. We've still got it at 0.1 of a microvolt there, so that's amazing. So we'll set the uh, S meter. We'll put 100 microvolts on the uh, signal there and set the S meter for S9. And the S meter adjustment, if you need to do it, it's just down there, VR4. The thing to do is the squelch, uh, which is VR2, which is hiding just down there. They make these uh, 
tricky to get to, but that's the squelch preset, and we'll just adjust that now. Squelch is adjusting nicely. We're at 100 microvolts on the uh, signal generator, and if we just roll it off, we're okay at the top end, and we'll just check it at the bottom end. We'll put 0.3 of a microvolt on the uh, signal generator. Set the squelch to threshold level. That's the threshold for the squelch. And then we'll pop it on. It's just about coming in there. Let's just turn it up slightly. So it's coming in at 0.32 of a microvolt. And it's going off at 0.28 and that, that's regular. That's very sensitive. So yes, that's a good squelch on this. That's uh, set up just right. Uh, what's next? I think we didn't do um, the low power adjusters. Just check that on transmit. And the low power attenuations, which is at the back there. And what we're doing on low power, we're doing half a watt. So that could do with coming down just a smidge and we'll do that off camera, but otherwise that's absolutely fine and the low power adjust is there, which is VR5. I hope you agree that's quite an improvement on what it looked like uh, when I first got it and it's certainly an improvement in terms of uh, how it's actually working now, which uh, is 100%, so uh, absolutely cracking, a superb radio. So uh, we'll see if we can raise Mick on it and just do a quick audio test and uh, then we'll wrap this video up. So remember when you're on eBay and you're looking at cheap uh, rigs or uh, a rig that's, the rig that is sold is not working, you could have what was wrong with this go wrong and it, and it I really can take some time to sort out. Um, just a quick recap on this one, we had the power socket fitted in the wrong way around and the leads on the wrong way around which had subsequently caused obviously a negative polarity situation which had blown the main audio IC. Uh, we got the relay cover missing, the wrong knob. Uh, the main RF transmit power uh, blown, um, the 8 volt regulator blown, the protection diode cut out or blown, and the meter bulb blown. So, um, you know, remember that when you're buying either a radio off of a technician or someone that's actually set the radio up because these kind of faults, A, can be fairly expensive to fix, very hard to fix some of the faults and uh, hard to diagnose anyway. And of course, then you've got to have all the gear to tune it up and get it working properly. So, um, do remember that when you're bidding on radios that uh, you will pay a little bit more from people that are selling the radios on eBay with a guarantee that they're working because uh, a lot of the time uh, there's a very good reason why the radios are on eBay and that's because they're not working and this seller was no different with his packed away donkeys years ago. Remove the, uh, the red sticker off of it which he seemed to put on all of his radios that were probably, I mean that probably this sticker uh, to them meant that it was beyond economical repair or they couldn't get it working but uh, it certainly wasn't beyond economical repair this one but you certainly uh, you need a little bit of know-how to get these uh, going when they're in this state. Super pleased with how the knob has come out on this I mean it really is absolutely perfect I mean uh, you, you know you get a look at the splines on it there for instance it's got all the splines and um, the hardest part was cutting this this label out that was real tricky but um, you know um, that really does, I think, set it off now. And um, unless you really knew your onions and you got in very, very close with a magnifying glass, you would never know that that was uh, that was actually uh, 3D printed, or it's resin printed. So yeah, that's a, a good save, I think, because um, getting hold of one of these knobs uh, would more than likely entail getting hold of a new radio, because uh, I would very be very surprised if they very rarely or if ever come up. Uh, for, on eBay so uh, and if they did you know you'll be playing um, you know silly prices 20 pound or something for one something like that so uh, there we go so uh, yeah no, no word from Mick yet but um, hopefully the next uh, shot you have of me in here will be with Mick having a bit of a chin wag after a bit of testing I did actually have to take the relay out um, I was having problems with the VCO dropping in and out and um, Upon further inspection, I tested my little relay and it was faulty. So um, what I've done is I've popped a header on the board here, uh, just the little uh, headers there, header pins, and then just soldered a relay uh, and stuck it down with some 3M pad there. 
uh, to the other side of it. So, uh, and that's now working superb and very reliably. So, uh, it's a shame that because I wanted to keep the original relay, but um, the, the pinout is totally different. Uh, the the uh, this was the the pinout difference. That's the orange relay there with the coil at the end, and on the other relay it went like that. So it was totally different. The pinouts. This is totally non-standard. That's standard now. So uh, that was the the old relay. This is the new, and that was the problem. So uh, yeah, there we go. That's fine. It's not going anywhere though. That's solid enough, and uh, we will move on and do a test with Mick. We're back in business. Let's uh, see if Mick's about. Wonder if you're about there, Mick. Superb, yeah, I just popped it back together and uh, I'm pleased to uh, uh, hear it sounding okay. I popped the modulation up a little bit, as you said, it was a bit low, but I think that was the relay malfunctioning, to be honest, Mick. There was, uh, there was a high resistance on it and uh, it was just all over the place on both sets of contacts. So hopefully this new relay is doing the business. Um, it's obviously a slightly cheaper quality than the one that was in there previously, but if it lasts 20 years, I'll, I'll be quite happy with that. I think it's doing a bang on bang on four watts, yeah. And uh, like I say, I've just gone through the VCR again on transmit and receive just to make sure it's uh, fully locked on and set up properly now. And um, yeah, it's doing really, really well. I mean, it's uh, took up a fair bit of time to do it, but I do do like these radios, and um, I'm really pleased with how the uh, control knob has come out. What do you think to that? Yeah, I made it slightly longer than the original knob um, to accommodate my big fat fingers. Um, but um, I've done one that matches the original one in terms of height and everything. I mean, I do like the look of them, but in practicality, I think the other knob that was on it was probably a better control knob. But um, I just wanted this to look uh, standard with the old witch's hat, Rog. That's right. I've been, I've been looking out for that other one as well. Yeah, Rog. Okay, mate. Well, I'll uh, wind the video up now. Um, so, if you've been watching this uh, from the start, thanks ever so much for watching. I know it's been a long one, but hopefully you've uh, took some of the techniques out of it and, uh, and and have enjoyed the video and will find it useful further down the line. So, with that, uh, well, thanks to Mick for the test, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.